Welcome to Behold, a series for women longing to live their lives worthy of the call they have received. I'm Christy Horsch, and this is episode 21. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 21. I am so glad that you are here with me today. I hope you've had a wonderful week since I last saw you. Thank you so much for joining me. I, It's been so exciting over the past few weeks. I have been able to meet several of you in person, just kind of at random events and different things. And it's been so nice to get to see you face to face and talk to you. It's just such a joy to teach these concepts. And so thank you very much for your support. And it's just, it's just been great. Anyway, before we get started, I wanted to let you know that next week there is going to be a mini bonus episode that's going to be talking to you a little bit about where we're going next. And so make sure that you check that out. Keep an eye out for it. If you want to make sure you don't miss it, then you'll want to subscribe. You can subscribe to us through the YouTube channel. We also have a podcast now. The podcast is available in your favorite podcast player. And so subscribe and rate and review. And then there's an email list, the email group. You can go through the website to get into the email group. And once you're in there, you will never miss an episode because they come directly to your inbox. And so that bonus will as well. So make sure you check us out in all those locations. We also have a private Facebook group that you can find in the show notes. All right. So previously we've talked about words and how certain words or phrases can be really significant when we're working on being more intentional in our thoughts. And so previously we talked about the words, what if, and how our brain often responds as if things are actually happening when we say, what if this happens or what if that happens? And so then we have the emotions of if if it's actually happening. And so we're going to talk about another word today. The word that we're going to talk about today is yet. And we're going to talk about the way that our brain responds to the word yet and how adding that small, small, but mighty word can make such a difference in the way that we're approaching things for ourselves. But first, let us start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, please just wash over us. Help us to listen for you. Listen for you today as we're we're learning how to manage our minds, but also listen to you in everything that we do as we go throughout the day. Lord, you have big dreams for us. You have plans for us that, that fulfill your divine purpose and help us to get closer to heaven. Please help us to know these desires of our hearts and know that they come from you and that just because they haven't happened doesn't mean that they won't happen. They just have to happen at a different time in your time and in your way. And so help us to know and not become discouraged that things have not happened yet. And instead Instead, let us continue to move forward towards those dreams so that we can grow ever closer to you. Help all that we do to give you glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So, we've talked before that a lot of us have goals or dreams, and a lot of us have given up on goals and dreams. And as you do this mindset work, hopefully you are starting to have some goals and dreams again. Okay. Some things that you're starting to work towards because God is inspiring you. He's putting something on your heart that he wants you to do. Something he wants you to move forward in. So when we do this, when we start to have this dream or this goal, we start to imagine it. And it's this beautiful world. And we imagine that we're living intentionally and we're managing our minds and it's this shiny future. And we've talked about this before. You have to love yourself right now in this moment to be able to get to, to be able to love yourself in that moment. Okay. And so we're, we still need to do that work, but a lot of times if our dreams don't happen immediately or instantly or within our predetermined set of time, we begin to get really frustrated. We start to kind of drown in this self pity and doubt and hopelessness. But why? Well, first of all, we love instant gratification. We want things to happen as quickly as possible and immediately, if possible at all. And 
so our culture has really told us that everything needs to be now, 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 now. And so our brain is in that groove, that groove of now. Our brain is not in the long haul thinking. Our brain is in immediacy thinking, okay? And our brain has deep grooves. Our brain has such deep grooves. And your brain wants to stay in those grooves because it knows that that's where you're safe. And of course, our brain's ultimate goal is to keep us safe. And from that place, when we set a dream or we set a goal, we get a short period into that, into working towards that goal. Maybe it's two weeks, a month, two months, even maybe a year we've been able to do it. And our brain will suddenly flip a switch. Our brain will say, I let you follow this goal, but this is taking too long. This is too uncomfortable. I'm not doing this anymore. We are going back to our old groove. Okay, and when you're aware of that, you can recognize, oh, this is coming, you know, knowing that this is going to come at some point as you're following your dream. That awareness is really important. So you become very aware that this is going to happen. And once you're aware of it, when you see it coming, you can stop. And we'll talk about how to, how to kind of flip, flip the switch back on those things. So for a lot of us, when we start a dream, our brain has said, okay, I can see this is important. Go ahead with the dream, but you get this amount of time. And if you can't get it done in this amount of time, I'm shutting it off. So for a lot of us, that means that starting something can be really fun and exciting. We can be really strong starters. And we can be like, yeah, I can do this. We can have a really solid couple weeks, whatever that goal might be. And then it just kind of starts to fade and fizzle out because we haven't seen immediate results. Okay, our brain has these sneaky thoughts about how long our goals should take and what it means when they don't happen. So with some awareness of our minds, then we can just get back into the groove of following our dreams rather than the groove that we used to be on. So let's do some examples. Remember that when we're doing mindset work, we have a circumstance. Our circumstance is what we've been given. That's, that's God. We have no control over it, and we shouldn't try to exert control over it. And that circumstance does not get us our results. Our thoughts get us our results. So God gave us free will. We get to choose our thoughts. Our thoughts create our feelings. Our feelings create our actions. Our actions give us our results. And so I'm going to give you an example. And the first example I'm going to give you is a weight loss example. And so for me... I set a goal for myself over a year ago to lose 143 pounds. It's a lot of weight, and I wanted to lose it all. And I set this goal, and I got started. Well, here we are, and I have not lost all my weight yet. I lost 105 pounds. I'm not quite there. So, I could have the thought, I have not lost all my weight. Yes, that thought is true. That thought is true. I believe that thought because it's true. I have not lost all the weight that I set out to lose. And But that thought that I have not lost all my weight, that thought can kind of make me feel hopeless or defeated or like it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen anyway. Okay, I can kind of spin from that thought of I have not lost my weight. And so from that place of hopelessness and defeated and kind of spinning with some of these things, I'll eat off plan or I'll buffer with something else that I also don't want to do. Like maybe it's, it's scrolling social media, binging Netflix while shopping, you know, whatever it might be, not doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing. I might start engaging in negative self-talk. Just really, how can you not, you know, how can you not be there? And then maybe I'm not taking care of myself in the same way that I was because I'm not being kind to myself. I'm breaking that trust with myself. And from that kind of a place, I'm not going to lose weight. That's not a, that's not a healthy environment for weight loss. And so instead I can change my thoughts and I can add the word yet. And so I have that same circumstance. I want to lose 143 pounds. I've lost 105. I have this many pounds to go. I have that same circumstance, but instead of having the thought, I haven't lost my weight. I can add that little word yet. I haven't lost my weight yet. And when I add that yet, I am adding hope. Because when we have that yet on there, we're implying that it's going to happen. 
We're implying that we know that it's going to happen, that we have confidence that it's going to happen. I have confidence that I am going to lose my weight. It just hasn't happened yet. And from that place, when I say, I haven't lost my weight yet, it changes the parts of my brain that are opening up. So before when I'm like, I haven't lost my weight, it just feels heavy, a lot of a negative, a lot of negative emotions. And from those negative emotions, I can't, and that spinning, I can't be a good problem solver. I haven't access to the problem solving part of my brain. But when I say I have not hit my goal weight yet, when I add that yet on there, I can start to access that problem solving part of my brain, that prefrontal cortex. I can start to make it working, get it going. And from that place, I'm going to feel curious. Well, why haven't I hit it yet? What do I need to change? What needs to stay the same? What's different about losing the first 100 pounds than losing the last 40? What, what can I do? And from that problem curiosity and problem solving place, I'm going to get answers. Our brain knows the answers. Our brain can find the answers. We live in a time where we can find the answers. I can Google it. We can figure it out. Okay? So from that place, I'm no longer going to feel hopeless or defeated. I'm going to feel curious. I'm going to feel excited. I'm going to feel empowered. Like I do have control over my thoughts. And so with that, then I'm going to have these feelings that are going to help me have the actions to stick to my plan, to get to my, and then have the result of getting to my goal. Okay. See how that yet works? Let's do another example. So let's say that one of your kids hits their sister. Okay. We can all agree they probably shouldn't be hitting. Okay. It, it, that That's something in our home. We're trying to raise our children up to not do things like that. And so from that place, you see your child hit their sister and they've never done it before. And you think, I don't know what I'm doing. Or maybe you think, I can't handle this. <laughs> but that from that place of, let's, let's go with the thought, I don't know what I'm doing. And when you think that thought, you feel very helpless. You might feel kind of trapped, like it's never going to get better because you don't know what to do anyway. And those feelings feel pretty yucky. And so you're going to buffer to try to push those feelings away. Buffer in whatever way works for you. You might also kind of indulge in that confusion and that, I don't know, confusion lets your head spin for a while. But your result from that is that you don't figure it out. You don't do what your child needs. You don't figure out what your boundaries are in the situation. You you just kind of let it keep happening. Or maybe you, you've yelled at them and, and said, ah, <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> ah, no, you yell at them and you say, no, hitting your sister, you know, whatever you do, but you don't feel like you handled that the way you'd like to handle it. And you're disconnected from your kid because your consequence didn't come from love. Your consequence came from anger and frustration and this, I don't know what I'm doing frame of mind. So instead, when your child hits his sister, instead of thinking, I don't know what I'm doing, you could think, I don't know what I'm doing yet. And once again, that yet, that yet, I don't know what I'm doing yet, kind of allows you to tag on to the end of it. I don't know what I'm doing yet, so I'm going to figure it out. Okay, because it opens up that problem solving, it opens up that curiosity that curiosity, maybe a little bit of hope that, yeah, I can figure this out because I'm a good problem solver. So then you start to research. You start to look into, what can I do for this? What kind of boundaries can I set up? What do I want our house to look like and feel like? And, and how can I work with this kid on it? Is it that this kid really needs a lot of help in this area? Or is it just, maybe we just need a little one-on-one -on -one time? Maybe this, maybe, this, maybe this kid's little and just needs a boundary of understanding that it's a rule in our house that we don't hit. Okay? We can start to be that problem solver. And so our action is that we solve the problem. We figure it out. And from that place, we become the mom who knows what to do. From the thought of adding that yet, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Then we can be the one that figures it out. And then we become, our result becomes that we figured it out. That we're the mom that knows what to do. So that little yet can just kind of open up that problem solving portion of your brain for you. This is powerful. Changing your thoughts with one word can bring about a huge change in your results. And so when we choose intentional thoughts, we have to believe them. Okay. Because if we don't believe them, 
then we're going to end up with a model that just doesn't work. And so in these instances, we usually will use a bridge thought to help us cross that threshold between our original thought and the thought we want to have. Okay, so sometimes we just need that bridge to help us get over. So for example, if I wanted to start to exercise, but I have this thought that I don't like to exercise, from that thought, it's really hard to get motivated. And so if I did some thought work and decided that I'd like to think I love to exercise, and I modeled it all out, it sounded great, I love to exercise. Well, in the moment when it comes time to exercise and I think, and I, I remind myself, I love to exercise, I'm not gonna actually feel the motivation that I thought I would. I'm just gonna kind of feel yucky because it's not true. I don't love to exercise, okay? We have to give ourselves believable thoughts. So instead, we can use the word yet to help us take that first step on the bridge from I don't like to exercise to I love to exercise. And that first step on the bridge can be the word yet. We can say, I don't like to exercise yet. And from that place, we feel that curiosity again, that yet, well, I don't like to exercise yet. That implies that I'm going to like to exercise. How am I going to do that? And it opens up that problem solving again. It gives our brain the confidence. We're being confident in, our, in ourselves when we say yet. We're being confident that we are going to get where we want to go. It just hasn't happened yet. Okay? So then, from that place of curiosity, I can ask the questions, activate that problem-solving skills, and challenge my brain to find solutions. Your brain is such a good problem-solver. When you challenge your brain to look for a solution, oftentimes it will find it. So then, I can try out my solutions, and I can take that first step onto the bridge to getting to the thought that I eventually would like to have, which is I love to exercise. Okay? And so the, maybe the next step after I don't like to exercise yet might be I'm learning to become a person who likes to exercise. And then maybe it'll become I like to exercise and then I love to exercise. You know, we're just going to work our way across the bridge as we keep going. And that's okay. That's a wonderful place to start. When we do the intentional model, we always want our thought to serve us. Even if the thought sounds pretty, we're not going to use it if it doesn't bring the feelings that we want. Because if we don't have the feeling that we need to get the action and the result, the, thought, the thought's pretty much useless. That thought, I love to exercise, is useless to me because it doesn't give me a feeling of motivation. It gives me a yucky feeling because it doesn't ring true for me yet. So this week, when you start giving yourself a hard time because you aren't where you want to be, Remind yourself that there is no timeline for improving your life. What if it takes two years to overcome your social media addiction, but then it never bothers you again for the next 50 years of your life? What if it takes you three years to learn to be at peace with your in-laws, but then you get to spend the next 20 years really enjoying them? What if it takes you two years to hit your goal weight, but then you never struggle with your weight again? We have these arbitrary timelines and they're just, we just don't need them. We tend to focus on the immediate. But the truth is sometimes the journey is what we need to get us to become the person that we're trying to become in that goal scenario, in that dream. And throughout that time, throughout that journey, God is creating the space for that dream to come true. He's creating that space to give you those graces and exactly what you need for that life that he's leading you to. So as we're focusing on this immediate, it can be uncomfortable to create that new groove in your brain for things to take a little longer sometimes. It's uncomfortable to go after your dreams. But if you knew that your goal would be met, if you knew that that dream was going to happen, exactly the way that God wanted it to. Wouldn't it be okay that you hadn't reached him yet? Mama, you can do this. You can live your dream. You just haven't yet. And that's okay. God puts this desire in your heart because he wants to give you an abundant life. And sometimes he gives you desires to help you begin to make space for that dream. The journey is important. If you haven't reached your dream yet, let your brain go to work to figure out how to accomplish those dreams and then continue. 
continue to work forward. Use these tools. Because once we embrace our journey, we will become the women who live our lives worthy of the call we have received. Thank you for so much for joining me today. I'm Christy Horsch. I will see you next week. God bless.